Shalom, Barakatha Yahweh, Barakatha Yahweh Shai, Ka Hala, Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha Raka Kwedash, double honors to the men who taught me this truth, the apostles and elders of the great millstone, also peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. This is going to be a quick lesson centered around the prophecy of prophecies, which is the coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. All right. When we read the book of James, chapter one, and verse one, it says, James, a servant of the Most High and of the Lord, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. So the 12 tribes of Israel, starting with the so-called Negroes on down to the so-called Mexicans are scattered abroad, all right? The famous diaspora, okay? Now, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, all right, is coming back to gather the elect out of Israel that is scattered throughout the four winds of the earth. When we read the book of St. Matthew, chapter 24, and St. Matthew 24 and verse 30, it says, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And that's Yahweh Shai not meeting this planet as he left, as the scripture tells us in Isaiah chapter 47 and verse three, it says, thy nakedness shall be uncovered. Speaking of America, starting with the wicked elites, it says, yeah, thy shame shall be seen. And that's all of the rape, robbery, murder, lies and bloodshed that Esau have done in the past. Now that light is shining upon them now their shame is being seen all right they have been made naked it says i will take vengeance and i will not meet thee as a man and that's speaking of our lord and savior yahweh shah coming back as that super angelical force that's why the scripture says in the book of saint matthew 24 and verse 30 and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven which is yahweh shah not meeting this earth as he left, which is not coming back as that sacrificial lamb, but coming back as that super angelical power, all right, that's going to subdue all of his enemies and all of our enemies. It says, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, all right? That's why the scripture says Yahweh Shai is going to wear many crowns, meaning he's going to take down all of the superpowers of the earth. It says, and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds. See that of heaven, which is what the vehicles of our salvation, Lord willing, we are part of the elect. The scripture tells us in the book of Psalms 104 and verse three, it says, who lay off the beams of his chariots in the waters, who make of the clouds his chariots. See that? So we see what the uh, clouds represents. It's a dark saying for the vehicles of our salvation, all right? The, the world deems them as unidentified aerial phenomenons, okay? So let's read that again. Psalms 104 and verse three, who lay off the beams of his chariots in the waters, who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wings of the wind, all right? So this is a dark saying, speaking about the UFOs, okay? Which the world calls them UFOs, but we call them IFOs because we identify the flying objects as being the chariots of the elect's salvation. Okay. That's why the scripture tells us in the book of Malachi chapter four and verse one, it says, for behold, the day cometh, which is prophecy that shall burn as an oven and all the proud starting with Esau, yeah, and all that do wickedly, ending with our people, shall be stubble. How do you create stubble? With fire. And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch, verse 2, but unto you, 
that fear my name, the elect, shall the son of righteousness, which is Yahweh arise with healing in his wings. That healing is us being changed out of these earthly bodies into our heavenly bodies. The wings represents what? The chariots or the vehicle of our salvation. It says, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. So let's go back to St. Matthew 24. Since we got a clearer understanding through the scriptures, through the precepts, what the clouds are, St. Matthew 24 and 30, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Why they're going to mourn? Because they're not going to rule anymore. It says, and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And we just read in Isaiah, the 47th chapter. All right. About that power and great glory. When you read the book of second Thessalonians. Chapter two. In verse eight, it says, and then shall that wicked be revealed. And these are the times that we're living in. Isaiah 47 chapter again, their nakedness is being seen. That light is shining upon them. The spirit of Yahweh Shai is upon his men. All right. And his men is shedding that light. Which is making the world understand who is that wicked with a capital W. All right. Our people do wickedly as we read in Malachi, the fourth chapter, but that proud nation is that wicked, which is Esau Edom, beginning with the top tier elites of Esau Edom, which are the so-called modern day white race. And then shall that wicked be revealed, talking about these times, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, which are his prophets, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Going back to Isaiah, the 47th chapter. Yahweh Shai not meeting this earth as he left. All right, coming back as a super angelical force. Okay? That's the destroying with the brightness of his coming because Yahweh Shai is going to be riding upon a huge fathership and all of his glory. Okay? To what? Subdue the wicked. All right? To wear many crowns. That's why the nations are going to sorrow. That's why they're going to mourn at the sight of Yahweh Shai. Okay? Once again, going back to St. Matthew 24 and 30 again. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Because Yahweh Shai is going to take them down. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, which are the chariots, with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds. That's why we read James 1 and 1. Okay? Because Israel has been scattered abroad, but the elect is going to be gathered from those four winds of the earth. It says from one end of heaven to the other. And that's the day that we're waiting for. All right? The prophecy of prophecies, which is the deliverance. Just like Noah received that deliverance, the book of Genesis, chapter 7, and verse 17, it says, And the flood was 40 days upon the earth. And this flood that's coming upon the earth is going to be fire this time. All right? We read in Malachi, the fourth chapter, in the first verse. All right? It says, And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bared up the ark and it was lifted up above the earth. And that's the same thing that's going to happen to the elect. Lord willing, we're a part of that number. We're going to be lifted up over the floods or the lake of fire. Okay. As the book of Revelation chapter 15 and verse one tells us, it says, and I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, last destruction. For in them is filled up the wrath of the Most High. And by that seven plague, we got to be out of here, Lord willing, if we are part of that number. If not, you're going to be destroyed. You're going to become a permanent American. Verse 2, 
and I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, which is the ozone layer mingled with those intercontinental ballistic missiles and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark, the elect, and over the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of the Most High. That's right. That's us being gathered from those four winds. Just as Noah was lifted up over the flood, we're going to be lifted up over this flood that's coming to America by the way of fire. And by us having those harps, the scripture says, verse 3, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of the Most High, and the song of the Lamb, which is Yahweh Shai, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord Power Almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Speaking of Yahweh Shai, because he's going to create a house or a hedge of protection for us. All right? All the way up until the total destruction. And then at the total destruction, he's going to beam us up. That's marvelous. That's the strangeness of our salvation that Wisdom of Solomon, the fifth chapter, speaks about. Okay? And that's the number that we want to be a part of. All right? Revelation chapter 1. And... Verse 6, it says, And have made us kings and priests unto the Most High and his Father. It says, To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Or so shall it be. Behold, he cometh with clouds, which is another dark saying for the chariots of the Most High, the vehicle of the elect's salvation. And every eye shall see him. So there's no one that's not going to witness this great return of Yahweh Shai. And all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Why? Because he's going to wear many crowns. He's going to take them down. Even so, Amun. So even so, let it be. That's right. So we want to be a part of that number. All right. That's going to be gathered. All right. That's going to be called up. Okay. That's going to be beamed up out of this total destruction that's coming to the soils of America. All right, so Lord willing, I pray that this made sense and that this was edifying. Shalom, DTA.